Balls Buddies, good morning and welcome to another week on AC's Crown Green Balls channel. And welcome to another Monday morning vlog, which of course I am recording Sunday afternoon in between the football matches. Guys, thanks for joining me. Remember, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you're not already a Balls Buddy and a member of this wonderful community of ours, please hit that subscribe button. It's completely free of charge. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for notifications of new content on the channel. Excellent, got it out of the way. Good morning again. So, it went well on Friday, the Ask Andy. I had a lot of good comments, which I might touch on uh, shortly. Go through one or two of them and just um, read them out and maybe add to them. Um, also today there was the latest Waterloo 50-50 draw with some further updates of the situation at the Waterloo and I'll touch on that. But firstly today was the last day of the East Lank Super League and once again yours truly was dragged out of bed to go and play bowls on a beautiful Gag Hills. Very very heavy though. Um, yeah, my body's not used to, to bowling after the golfing I've been doing this weekend. So it wasn't the best, but a win's a win, I guess. So straight away, we'll cart on with that. So week seven results. Uh, Accrington 2, Craven 16. Preston 7, Darwin 11. Rosendale 9, Burnley 9. And Clitheroe 3, Pendle 15. Which means that... If I can get there. Um, I think it's Pendle who have won the title. Let's just get the league table up. There was some discrepancy apparently about the third place. But winning the War of the Roses Super League from eight with 84 points from seven games is Pendle. Second to Craven on 80 points. Third were Preston with 72 points and they got third place on Chalk's difference plus 98 compared to Darwin's plus 59. Fifth of the mighty Rosendale, sixth Burnley with 62 points, seventh Clidero with 35 and bottom of the pile were Accrington with 30 points. So big well done to Pendle on becoming the inaugural champions and on behalf of the players of the league and, and myself, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Matt Bond and Chris Eastham for doing all the hard work behind the scenes. It's been muchly appreciated. Also, I got an email off, well, I got two emails actually, off Damien, Dangerous Damien Morrison from Warrington with a few results on. Now, if you're on Facebook, you may have already seen these, but uh, he sent them to me anyway. I'm not sure when this was played. It was a Hadfield one day open. John Brown, I think from Warrington. Uh, there's a few John Browns, but I think it's the Warrington one. Beat Dean Ferris 21 14 in the final. And in uh, Bellingham in Wigan. Uh, there was a pairs event during the or, that's been played over the last couple of weeks, and the winners were John Crossley and Neil Bissell, the panel men, beating two other panel men in Stuart Mort and George Chadwick, 21-18. So, um, those are the results I've had in. Also, uh, Jack Dyson was winner of the Griffin Champion of Champions. Um, it's been renamed the Karen Cairns Champion of Champions uh, in memory of my beautiful late wife. Um, so Jack's took all my money uh, for that. Uh, who did he beat in the final? I'll just have to check. Bear with me. Bear with me. Who did he beat in the final? I was playing golf at some wonderful golf course, but it was under about eight foot of water. So I'll just have to go back. And he beat Mark Ullman, yes, Ullman Slice from Leeds, 21-9 in the final. And I'm told he's also won the Open Pairs competition that they have at the Griffin today. 
he teamed up with one of my old pairs partners, Wayne Mosley, to beat Liam uh, Fallis and Craig Gant 21 13 in the final. So, Hoover literally hoovering everything up at the Griffin. Ah, thank you. Uh, you'll be seeing plenty of the Griffin over the winter. I'll be going there most weekends and I'll endeavour to get footage and make a little video for you. Uh, so that might be nice. So that's that. Right, we'll get on to the Waterloo. The Waterloo draw was done today. The first prize winner was Baz Loden from Barrow. I think taking home £600, which is, you know, a good amount of money. Um, the situation I can... As I can gather from uh, the video, is there around £50,000. They definitely need £75,000 to make it all worthwhile. Uh, to do everything they need to do to get a 10-year lease and then take it forward. And they've got £50,000 guaranteed. That's what they've got. That's what people have donated, offered to donate, etc, etc. So... They're hoping that there's still going to be money coming in, but there's been an offer made. Uh, if anyone is willing to donate £1,000 uh, and they get the £75,000 that they need to take it all forward, if you've donated that £1,000, you will get free finals week's tickets uh, for the next five years. So that's uh, two sets of five-day tickets each. Um, for the next five years, which is a very nice gesture. I mean, ob obviously, if the seventy-five thousand isn't raised, you'll get the money back anyway. And there is talk of reimbursing larger donations if they get to that point that they're turning a big profit. Uh, but thousand pounds, and in return, you get Waterloo tickets. That's a very kind gesture. Very nice gesture. If you want to get in touch uh, with Gary Ellis or Ricky Cochran, I will put their numbers in the description of the video down below. Uh, Gary made the point that he does want people to go and visit the stadium if they're thinking of, of donating that sort of money so they understand where that money's going. It's not just going in a black hole. Uh, he wants you to meet the um, project manager and explain what would be happening with your money which i think again is another really good idea and makes you feel part of the whole thing which is important so that was the waterloo uh and then finally just a few comments uh from friday i'll just bring them up there's a couple that just got me really sort of um interested tommy hayes the mighty atom one of one of the very best that's played the game can't endorse Andy's views more. Bang on. I was lucky to be there when the game was at its peak, and he absolutely was. And he was a wonderful, wonderful crown green bowler. Um, that's a bit long, that one. There was one that really got me interested. A guy called Norman Cobbett. Not sure if that's a made-up name or not, or real name. Where I first started playing bowls three years ago, I was knocked sideways by the old boys in their blazers. I thought to myself, this is not for me. I want to have a laugh and a joke and enjoy the game. So I think bowls needs a new broom. Get rid of this old nonsense. Prize money needs to be a lot more. No one's going to travel just to win 50 quid. Need to get Barry Hearn involved. Good luck and cheer up. Yeah, it takes more than that for me to cheer up. I couldn't imagine anyone like Barry Hearn touching crown green balls with a barge pole, to be perfectly honest. I think there's far too much politics and he definitely wouldn't want to get uh, involved. Uh, who's this? Just comes up Mark Sy. Don't think that's his full name. Andy, you need to get yourself on the top ranks of the BCGBA. Ideas and enthusiasm like yours is what's needed in our game. Unfortunately, been there, tried it, got ignored, stopped bothering. Um, I think I may have mentioned that I was part of a think tank. Well, yeah, nearly 10 years ago now. There was myself, Gary Ellis, Graham Wilson, Lynn Pritchett, Mel Evans, uh, Jimmy Parker. All, there were others as well. I'm just trying to think of everyone, but that sort of people. And we came up with some good ideas that they just got poo-pooed out of hand. Uh, I think the only things we actually got through was renaming the team championships the World Team Championships as a bit of a gimmick that might get 
got um, TV companies involved, you know, world championships, all that sort of thing. Uh, and a suggestion for John Parrott, well, it was just a suggestion to have a patron at first, but then we sort of came up with John Parrott. So two really easy things that didn't cost any money or didn't really change anything. They were the only two things that they ever took on board from us. None of us claimed any expenses. I think we went to three or four meetings and we could have well within our rights to claim petrol money uh, like all the other BCGBA delegates do for every single meeting they go to uh, but we didn't want to take anything because Bowles needs money more than we did uh, and we were more than happy to give our time and uh, our ideas for free unfortunately nothing really came of it so that was a shame big shame um, let's see there was another one. Oh, this is it Southers I think it's Mark Southers from, from Rochdale uh, disagree about the number of entries it's the entry fee putting people off just can't afford it and I sort of go along with that you know it's it's a lot to pay 25 30 pounds on top of maybe another 20 25 quid in petrol money um, all I would say about the entry fees is I don't think, whilst the entry fees has gone up, the prize money hasn't, and that's the big issue. I always relate things like entry fees back to the price of a pint, okay? So in 1990, when I just started going to the pubs, you could get a pint of beer for a pound, just about a pound. So a five pound entry was five pints to me, ten pound entry, ten pints. So fast forward now to 2020, Five pints of beer, if you're drinking bitters, probably three pound a pint. So that's 15 quid. Uh, and if it was 10 pints, i.e. 10 pounds, back in 1990, 10 pints would be 30 quid. So I don't think the entry fees are that out of proportion. What is out of proportion is the prize money that's on offer. Uh, it's not really there. It's not. The rec you're just not being compensated for your, your time, your initial outlay, your efforts, etc. So paying 25 quid to win 500 quid, when back in the day you might have only paid a fiver, doesn't just gel. But that's because of the lack of sponsorship, I guess. Um, Andy Buckley, also a win of the Waterloo. I think modern technology has played a part and the childhood has changed a lot for kids nowadays playstation xbox iphones this has certainly not helped in my opinion just the last thing i want to say about it um a lot of people now play poker online and think nothing of a hundred pound buying fifty pound buying yet you know when they were bowling they wouldn't pay a twenty pound entry fee and I think, I honestly think that online poker and gambling has had a massive knock on effect. I think there's a lot of people turn their back on bulls to do that more, to play poker on a night instead of going out bowling. And like I say, they're willing to part with 50 quid, 100 quid, because they might win an awful lot more than that. At bowls, never going to happen. So anyway, that's, that's all I've got to say now. That's the uh, the lid on last week's show. I'll come up with something a bit more positive maybe for this week. Uh, right, on the channel this week, obviously today's Monday morning vlog. Tuesday, normally there would be a tutorial, but I'm just taking a hiatus briefly. I need to plan out another six episodes. I need to get them filmed. Uh, I'd like to do it all in one go, so I'm waiting for some nicer weather. Uh, so it might be a couple of weeks before you see another Tuesday tutorial but they will be back, there is plenty to go at guys I can't tell you everything on a tutorial a lot of the stuff you need to practice yourself I can't tell you how much a ball's going to bend on a 30 yard strike it depends on how hard you strike, depends on the green it's something that you have to try for yourself and you have to figure it out for yourself because Practice makes perfect. I can only point you in the right direction, okay? And I'm more than happy to do that and help you with that. 
Wednesday, there'll be Wednesday wear, and I think I've only three of those left, so fingers crossed I can shift a bit more weight. Thursday, yes, there is a retro video. It's already uploaded and will be scheduled for release on Thursday. And Friday, there's another Ask Andy, and if anyone has any interesting questions uh, or a subject I can get my teeth stuck into, I would be more than happy to entertain such a suggestion. So, guys... That's it for the week. Have a good one. Uh, hopefully it'll stay dry and you can get outside. And guys, if you do want green, please remember, stay safe. And I'll see you on the other side.